Agle Island. Agle Island, in County Mayo is the largest of the Irish Isles, and is situated off the west coast of Ireland. It has a population of 2,700. Its area is. Agle is attached to the mainland by Michael Devitt Bridge, between the villages of Gob and Choir, Agle Sound, and Polraithney, Palrani. A bridge was first completed here in 1887, replaced by another structure in 1949, and subsequently replaced with the current bridge which was completed in 2008. Other centers of population include the villages of Kiel, Dua, Thuma Iga, Duaga, Dunover, Dunover, the Valley and Dugort. The parish's main Gaelic football pitch and secondary school are on the mainland at Polraithney. Early human settlements are believed to have been established at Anakal around 3000 BC. A paddle dating from this period was found at the Cranog near Dukanella. The island is 87% peat bog. It is believed that at the end of the Neolithic period, around 4000 BC, Agle had a population of 500 to 1,000 people. The island would have been mostly forced until the Neolithic people began crop cultivation. Settlement increased during the Iron Age, and the dispersal of small promontory forts around the coast indicate the warlike nature of the times. Megalithic tombs and forts can be seen at Slivmore, along the Atlantic Drive and on a kill bay. Agle Island lies in the barony of Barishul, in the territory of ancient Umhal, Umhal Oecterac and Umhal Ioctorac that originally encompassed an area extending from the County Galway slash Mayo border to Acklehead. The hereditary chieftains of Umhal were the O'Malley's, recorded in the area in 814 AD when they successfully repelled an onslaught by the Vikings in Clue Bay. The Anglo-Norman invasion of Connaught in 1235 AD saw the territory of Umhal taken over by the Butlers and later by the Taburgos. The Butler lordship of Barishul continued into the late 14th century when Thomas Le Batiller was recorded as being in possession of Akil and Awil. In the 17th and 18th centuries, there was much migration to Akil from other parts of Ireland, particularly Ulster, due to the political and religious turmoil of the time. For a while there were two different dialects of Irish being spoken on Ackle. This led to many townlands being recorded as having two names during the 1824 Ordnance Survey, and some maps today give different names for the same place. Ackle Irish still has many traces of Ulster Irish. Carrick Kildevnet Castle is a 15th century tower house associated with the O'Malley clan, who were once a ruling family of Ackle. Grace O'Malley, or Granuil, the most famous of the O'Malley's was born on Clare Island around 1530. Her father was the chieftain of the barony of Marisk. The O'Malley's were a powerful seafaring family, who traded widely. Grace became a fearless leader and gained fame as a sea captain and pirate. She is reputed to have met with Queen Elizabeth I in 1593. She died around 1603 and is buried in the O'Malley family tomb on Clare Island. One of Ackle's most famous historical sites is that of the Ackle Mission or the colony at Dugort. In 1831 the Church of Ireland Rev. Edward Nangle found a proselytizing mission at Dugort. The mission included schools, cottages, an orphanage, an infirmary and a guesthouse. The colony was very successful for a time and regularly produced a newspaper called the Ackle Herald and Western Witness. Nangle expanded his mission into Mwilin, where a school was built. The Ackle mission began to decline slowly after Nangle was moved from Ackle and was finally closed in the 1880s. Nangle died in 1883. In 1894, the Westport, Newport railway line was extended to Ackle Sound. The railway station is now a hostel. The train provided a great service to Ackle, but it also was said to have fulfilled an ancient prophecy. Brian Rua Kirpain had prophesied that carts on iron wheels would carry bodies into Ackle on their first and last journey. In 1894, the first train on the Ackle Railway carried the bodies of victims of the Clue Bay drowning. This tragedy occurred when a boat overturned in Clue Bay, drowning 32 young people. They had been going to meet the steamer which would take them to Scotland for potato picking. The Kirk and Tillich fire in 1937 almost fulfilled the second part of the prophecy when the bodies of 10 victims were carried by rail to Ackle. While it was not literally the last train, the railway would close just two weeks later. These people had died in a fire in a bothy in Kirk and Tillich. This term referred to the temporary accommodation provided for those who went to Scotland to pick potatoes, a migratory pattern that had been established in the early 19th century. Kildevne on the southeast coast of Ackle is named after St. Don Knight, or Dymphna, who founded a church there in the 16th century. There is also a holy well just outside the graveyard. 
The present church was built in the 1700s and the graveyard contains memorials to the victims of two of Ackles' greatest tragedies, the Kirch and Tillich Fire, 1937, and the Clue Bay Drowning, 1894. In 1852, Dr. John McHale, Archbishop of Tuam set aside land in Bonacuri for the building of a monastery. A Franciscan monastery was built which, for many years provided an education for local children. The ruins of this monastery are still to be seen in Bonacuri today. The historic Valley House is located in the valley, near Dugord in the northeast of Ackle Island. The present building sits on the site of a hunting lodge built by the Earl of Cavan in the 19th century. Its notoriety arises from an incident in 1894 in which the then owner, an English landlady named Agnes MacDonald, was savagely beaten and the house set alight, allegedly by a local man, James Lynchon. Lynchon had been employed by MacDonald as her land agent, but the two fell out and he was sacked and told to quit his accommodation on her estate. A lengthy legal battle ensued, with Lynchon refusing to leave. Dot at the time, in the 1890s, the issue of land ownership in Ireland was politically charged and after the events at the Valley House in 1894 Lynchon was to claim that his actions were motivated by politics. He escaped custody and fled to the United States, where he successfully defeated legal attempts by the British authorities to have him extradited to face charges arising from the attack and the burning of the Valley House. Agnes MacDonnell suffered terrible injuries from the attack but survived and lived for another 23 years, dying in 1923. Lynchon is said to have returned to Ackle on two occasions, once in disguise as an American tourist, and eventually died in Girvan, Scotland, in 1937. The Valley House is now a hostel and bar. Close by Dugort, at the base of Slivmore Mountain lies the deserted village. There are approximately 80 ruined houses in the village. The houses were built of unmortared stone, which means that no cement or mortar was used to hold the stones together. Each house consisted of just one room and this room was used as a kitchen, living room, bedroom and even a stable. If one looks at the fields around the deserted village and right up the mountain, one can see the tracks in the fields of lazy beds, which is the way crops leek hay potatoes were grown. In Ackle, as in many areas of Ireland, a system called Rundale was used for farming. This meant that the land around a village was rented from a landlord. This land was then shared by all the villagers to graze their cattle and sheep. Each family would then have two or three small pieces of land scattered about the village, which they used to grow crops. For many years people lived in the village and then in 1845 famine struck in Ackle as it did in the rest of Ireland. Most of the families moved to the nearby village of Dua, which is beside the sea, while some others emigrated. Living beside the sea meant that fish and shellfish could be used for food. The village was completely abandoned, which is where the name Deserted Village came from. No one has lived in these houses since the time of the famine, however, the families that moved to do and their descendants continued to use the village as a bully village. This means that during the summer season, the younger members of the family, teenage boys and girls, would take the cattle to graze in the hillside and they would stay in the houses of the deserted village. This custom continued until the 1940s. Bullying was also carried out in other areas off Ackle, including Anna on Croagon Mountain and in Curran. At Ilt, Kuldownet, you can see the remains of a similar deserted village. This village was deserted in 1855 when the tenants were evicted by the local landlord so the land could be used for cattle grazing. The tenants were forced to rent holdings in Curran, Duega, and Slivmore. Others emigrated to America. Ackle Archaeological Field School is based at the Ackle Archaeology Center in Dua, which has served as a catalyst for a wide array of archaeological investigations in the island. It was founded in 1991 and is a training school for students of archaeology and anthropology. Since 1991, several thousand students from 21 countries have come to Ackle to study and participate in ongoing excavations. The school is involved in a study of the prehistoric and historic landscape at Slivmore incorporating a research excavation at a number of sites within the deserted village of Slivmore. Slivmore is rich in archaeological monuments that span a 5,000-year period from the Neolithic to the post-medieval. Recent archaeological research suggests the village was occupied year-round at least as early as 19th century, though it is known to have served as a seasonally occupied Bully village by the first half of the 20th century. A Bully village, a number of which exist in a ruined state on the island is a village occupied only during part of the year, such as a resort community, a lake community, or, as the case on Ackle, 
a place to live while tending flocks or herds of ruminants during winter or summer pasturing. Specifically, some of the people of Du in Pola would migrate in the summer to Slidmore and then go back to Du in the autumn. The summer 2009 field school excavated Roundhouse 2 on Slidmore Mountain under the direction of archaeologist Stuart Rathbone. Only the outside north wall, entrance way, and inside of the roundhouse were completely excavated. From 2004 to 2006, the Ackle Island Maritime Archaeology Project directed by Chuck Mide was sponsored by the College of William and Mary, the Institute of Maritime History, the Ackle Folklife Center, now the Ackle Archaeology Center, and the Lighthouse Archaeological Maritime Program, LAMP. This project focused on the documentation of archaeological resources related to Ackle's rich maritime heritage. Maritime archaeologists recorded 19th century fishing station, ice house, and boathouse ruins, a number of anchors which had been salvaged from the sea, 19th century and more recent current pens, a number of traditional vernacular watercraft including a possibly 100-year-old Akalyul, and the remains of four historic shipwrecks. The cliffs of Croagon on the western end of the island are the third highest sea cliffs in Europe but are inaccessible by road. Near the westernmost point of Akal, Akal Head, is Keen Bay. Keel Beach is quite popular with tourists and some locals as a surfing location. South of Keen Beach is Moitoch Head, which with its rounded appearance drops dramatically down to the ocean. An old British observation post, built during World War I to prevent the Germans from landing arms for the Irish Republican Army, is still standing on Moitoch. During the Second World War, this post was rebuilt by the Irish Defence Forces as a lookout post for the Coast Watching Service Wing of the Defence Forces. It operated from 1939 to 1945. The mountain Slivmore, 672 meters, rises dramatically in the north of the island and the Atlantic Drive, along the south slash west of the island, has some dramatic views. On the slopes of Slivmore, there is an abandoned village, the deserted village, the deserted village is traditionally thought to be a remnant village from in Gordimore, the Great Hunger of 1845 to 1849. Just west of the deserted village is an old Mertello Tower again built by the British to warn of any possible French invasion during the Napoleonic Wars. The area also boasts an approximately 5,000-year-old Neolithic tomb. A Kilbeg, Little Ackel, is a small island just off Ackel's southern tip. Its inhabitants were resettled on Ackel in the 1960s. A plaque to Johnny Kilbin is situated on a Kilbeg and was erected to celebrate 100 years since his first championship win. The villages of Dunavar and Askill have picturesque scenery and the cycle route is popular with tourists. Kishlongren, also known as Kuldownet Castle, is a small tower house built in the early 1400s. It is located in Cloughmore, on the south of Ackle Island. It is noted for its associations with Grace O'Malley, along with the larger Rockfleet Castle in Newport. While a number of attempts at setting up small industrial units on the island have been made, the economy of the island is largely dependent on tourism. Subventions from Ackle people working abroad, in particular in the United Kingdom, the United States, and Africa allowed many families to remain living in Ackle throughout the 19th and 20th centuries. Since the advent of Ireland's Celtic tiger economy, fewer Ackle people were forced to look for work abroad. Agriculture plays a small role, and the fact that the island is mostly bog means that its potential for agriculture is limited largely to sheep farming. In the past, fishing was a significant activity, but this aspect of the economy is small now. At one stage, the island was known for its shark fishing, basking shark in particular was fished for its valuable liver oil. There was a big spurt of growth in tourism in the 1960s and 1970s before which life was tough and difficult on the island. Despite healthy visitor numbers each year, the common perception is that tourism in Ackle has been slowly declining since its heyday. Currently, the largest employers on Ackle are two hotels. In late 2009 Ireland's only turbot farm opened in the Bunnacurry Business Park. Most people on Ackle are either Roman Catholic or Anglican, Church of Ireland. There are three priests on Ackle and eight churches in total. Hedge schools existed in most villages of Ackle in various periods of history. A university was started by the missions to Ackle and Whelan. In the modern age, there used to be two secondary schools in Ackle, M.C. Hale College, and Scoil Domnight. However, in August 2011, the two schools amalgamated to form Coles P.O. Bailakla. For primary education, there are nine national schools including Bullsmith N.S., Valley NS, Bonacuri NS, Duke and L NS, Du NS, Saul NS, Ackle Sound NS, Tonraji NS and Curran NS. National schools closed down include Duag NS, 
Crumpon NS, Ashley Menes. As a popular tourist destination, Akil has many bars, cafes and restaurants which serve a full range of food. However, with the island's Atlantic location seafood is a speciality on Akil with common foods including lobster, mussels, salmon, trout and winkles. With a large sheep population, Akil lamb is a very popular meal on the island too. Furthermore, Akil has a big population of cows which produces excellent beef. Ackle has a Gaelic football club which competes in the Intermediate Championship and Division 1C of the Mayo League. There are also Ackle Rovers which play in the Mayo Association Football League. An Ackle Golf Club. Outdoor activities can be done through Ackle Outdoor Education Center. Ackle Island's rugged landscape and the surrounding ocean offers multiple locations for outdoor adventure activities, like surfing, kite surfing, and sea kayaking. Fishing and water sports are also popular. Sailing regattas featuring a local vessel type, the Ackle Yule, have been popular since the 19th century, though most present day Yules, unlike their traditional working boat ancestors, have been structurally modified to promote greater speed under sail. The island's waters and underwater sites are occasionally visited by scuba divers, though Ackle's unpredictable weather generally has precluded a commercially successful recreational diving industry. In 2011, the population was 2,569. The island's population has declined from around 6,000 before the Great Hunger. The table below reports data on Ackle Island's population taken from Discover the Islands of Ireland, Alex Ritzima, Collins Press, 1999, and the Census of Ireland. Because of the inhospitable climate, few inhabited houses date from before the 20th century though there are many examples of abandoned stone structures dating to the 19th century. The best known of these earlier can be seen in the deserted village ruins near the graveyard at the foot of Slivmore. Even the houses in this village represent a relatively comfortable class of dwelling as, even as recently as a hundred years ago, some people still used beehive-style houses, small circular single-room dwellings with a hole in the ceiling to let out smoke. Many of the oldest inhabited cottages date from the activities of the Congested Districts Board for Ireland, a body set up around the turn of the 20th century in Ireland to improve the welfare of the inhabitants of small villages and towns. Most of the homes in Ackle at the time were very small and tightly packed together in villages. The CDB subsidized the building of new, more spacious, though still small by modern standards, homes outside of the traditional villages. Some of the recent building development, 1980 and onwards, on the island does fit as nicely in the landscape as the earlier style of whitewashed raised gable cottages. Many holiday homes have been built but many of these houses have been built in prominent scenic areas and have damaged traditional views of Thiesland while lying empty for most of the year. Heinrich Boll, Irisha's Tagebuch, Berlin 1957 Kingston, Bob, The Deserted Village at Slivmore, Castle Bar 1990 MacDonald, Teresa, Ackle, 5000 BC to 1900 AD Archaeology History Folklore, IAS Publications, 1992 Miam, Rosa, The Story of Mayo, Castle Bar 2003 Carney, James, The Playboy and the Yellow Lady, 1986 Pool Big Hugo Hamilton, The Island of Talking, 2007 Kevin Berry, Beetlebone, 2015. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.